Well, there's an urgent need for blood donations tonight. We've been saying this for a year, but it's not getting any better. Today, for the first time ever, the Red Cross declaring a national blood crisis. The blood connection tells us they're critically low, too. So they're aiming to have a week's supply of each blood type, but right now they only have a two to three day supply of some types and even less of others. The Blood Connection is the only supplier of blood to upstate hospitals and they need 800 donations a day. If you are on the fence about donating, a spokesperson we talked to says, think about the person on the other side who was counting on us for help. It's about 45 minutes to an hour of your time, but for somebody that needs a unit of blood, it could be a lifetime. That They are relying on this resource that cannot be made in a lab. It has to be donated, but from the good of somebody's heart. Um, and they're relying on that resource. So that, I think, is the important part to think of, um, that for every time that you go to donate, that's somebody in your community that you're helping. And if you need an incentive to save a life, you could also make money by donating. They're offering gift cards to get more people in a chair to donate. And we have a link to find the nearest blood center in the As Seen On section at foxcarolina.com and inside our free app. Fox Carolina weather, weather rate certified most accurate local forecast. Well, some nice weather on the way for Wednesday. We'll have a lot of sunshine and highs in the low 50s, which is close to normal for this time of year. Uh, so really smooth sailing weather-wise as we go into the middle part of the week. And it's going to continue to warm up into Friday, but then temperatures take a dive this weekend. And that's when we're expecting to see some winter weather starting Saturday night and going into the day on Sunday. In fact, Sunday. It may be a struggle to get temperatures to warm out of the 30s across the upstate. Let's break down the timeline for when we could see some snow or wintry mix. And again, a lot is still yet to be determined at this point. But models have been bringing the system in towards Saturday evening into the overnight hours. So I really think after midnight, is going to be the best bet to start seeing some of that heavier snow in the mountains and then potentially a mix or snow in the upstate. The heaviest is likely going to be towards Sunday morning to midday, and then it would begin to make its way out into the late afternoon, early evening Sunday. So this could be a fairly long lived event, uh, but a lot is still yet to be determined. As I mentioned, the kind of precipitation, how much, and we'll be fine tuning that forecast as we look at all the computer models over the next few days. We'll look at the American and European models specifically coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Kendra, thanks so much. We'll see you in a few. Well, staff absences could impact in-person learning at Greenville County Schools, the district, the state's largest school district, suggesting parents get ready for the potential to go to e-learning in the days to come if things continue as they are. Fox Carolina's Teresa Bowles talked to parents and the school district about this and has this report. 1,700 out of 11,000. A bunch of staff members quarantining, after a while it becomes a concern. How do we operate a school? That's how many staff weren't present for work for Greenville County Schools Monday. Media Relations Director Tim Waller says the impacts could cause a revert to e-learning. Staff absences uh, eventually you know, spread out across the county is really the biggest concern. So maybe not so much at an individual school, but our ability to muster up uh, substitute teachers or people here from the district building driving out to the schools to fill in. Waller says most of these absences are COVID related. Jeanette Schmidt saw this coming. I feel like it should have probably came sooner. If we had been encouraging mask usage from the start of the school year, I feel like we may not have had to reach this point. Schmidt has three kids. She feels teachers should stay home because of COVID if they need to. If a teacher has been exposed to COVID and is awaiting a test result, it's not realistic to expect them to come into a crowded classroom teaching students on the off hope that she doesn't spread COVID to them. Waller says this will be on a school to school basis, but he suggests for parents to make at home preparations. It's not going to happen necessarily, but it could happen and please plan for it. Teresa Bowles, Fox Carolina News, back to you. Other parents in our Facebook comments feel as though their students will suffer their quality of education and argue that if staff is asymptomatic and negative, they should be able to return to work. The district says they'll extend their hours at COVID testing sites and are following DHEC guidelines. Developing tonight, take a look at this freight train that crashed into a mobile home in North Carolina. 
Authorities in Stanley County says well, no one was hurt. The sheriff's office there says the truck driver was moving that mobile home across the tracks when the train slammed into it. Now the train was only going about 10 miles an hour, so maybe slam is not the correct word. Just hit it. Troopers uh, are investigating exactly uh, why that truck driver had the mobile home on the tracks at the time the train was coming through. Well, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, they visited Atlanta today to deliver a major speech on voting rights. This is all an effort to turn up the heat on senators who are reluctant to pass his voting rights bills. The legislation being opposed by nearly all Republicans on Capitol Hill. I believe that the threat to our democracy is so grave that we must find a way to pass these voting rights bills. Debate them. Vote. Let the majority prevail. And if that bare minimum is blocked, we have no option but to change the Senate rules, including getting rid of the filibuster for this. It comes amid pressure by advocates calling on the president to spell out a clearer pathway to the passage of this voting rights bill. Without changing the filibuster rules, it's unclear how either bill will get passed, but the Senate is expected to take up voting rights soon. Well, Governor Brian Kemp there in Georgia responded to the president's push for voting rights legislation, claiming it is an assault on an election integrity and that Georgians don't want the bill. The fact that President Biden and Vice President Harris are coming down here on the day of all days to force their radical agenda on hardworking Georgians just shows how to touch with reality they really are. But make no mistake, Georgia is ground zero for the Biden-Harris assault on election integrity, as well as attempts to federalize everything from how hardworking Georgians run their businesses, to what our kids are taught in school, to how we run elections. Ignoring facts and evidence now, we did learn Governor Kemp will deliver the State of the State address on Thursday at 11 a.m. South Carolina State of the State will be next Wednesday, January 19th. We're still waiting to hear when North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper will address his state. Well, buses in Greenville were used to help raise awareness about human trafficking today. We'll explain. Plus, mom on the run after child tested positive with drugs. Well, there you have why she's made tonight's Most Wanted. We'll have more on her and we'll learn her name. And maybe you can help find her for us tonight. You got it? Man, we made it like, what, 40 minutes? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. We're good now? Okay, cool.
Welcome back. If you are wondering why public bus fares in Greenville were free today, it's for a good cause. Today is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day, and Greenlink wants to make sure people know how to help if they see something that doesn't look right. Fox Carolina's Carrie Weimer has more on what Greenlink is doing after new stats were released this week. The point of today is to say trust your gut. If you saw something that did not feel right, it's probably not right. Staff and volunteers from the downtown Greenlink terminal rode buses today to pass out business cards with the National Human Trafficking Hotline's toll-free phone number. And as people got on, talked to them about what's going on today and why it was free. Bus fares were waived thanks to Piedmont Health Foundation and riders were able to learn how to anonymously report tips or confidentially request help if they needed to. If you are looking to get yourself out of a situation, we're hoping that these get passed along to any individual that could use them. Greenlink says with over 2,000 rides a day, they train their staff to look for signs of human trafficking and want the public to do the same. Sometimes it's that little icky feeling that you get when you're looking at something and you know it's not right. And it's like, well, what do I do with that information? Like, do I call the police? They didn't know who to contact. It was so nice to be able to say, here's this card. There's like the innocent bystander effect where everyone thinks someone else is going to say something. And what if no one else does? What if everyone else thinks someone else is going to say something? The South Carolina Attorney General released new information this week showing reported human trafficking in the state by county. Greenville was the third highest, Spartanburg was the fifth, Anderson was sixth, and Greenwood was ninth. The AG's report also shows trafficking happens largely with an intimate partner or a family member. So we can only, as a community, combat this if we're reporting the tips. If each one does a little bit, no one has to do a lot. And the idea that we're helping each other just be a better Greenville. Carrie Weimer, Fox Carolina News. And for more on the story, we have it inside our free Fox Carolina News app. Let's check in. That's right, Cody. It's going to be a cold night ahead, and we've got some you know, fairly calm weather coming for the next few days. We're going to mostly sunny skies and mild conditions, at least compared to the last couple of days going into Thursday and Friday. But it's the weekend that holds probably the most interest with all of you when it comes to forecast. Maybe you saw on one of your apps, maybe you saw on our app that there's a snowflake icon for Sunday. And that's because we have a system coming in that there's likely going to bring at least a little bit of winter weather into the upstate and snow for the mountains. It's going to be a heavy snow in the higher terrain. Still a lot of question marks about what it will bring in the upstate. We're going to talk more about it. 30 currently in Spartanburg. It is cold out there. 29 already in Lawrence. 28 in Hendersonville. So temperatures falling fast. We're going to start in the teens and low 20s tomorrow morning. Make sure those pets can get warm. Fox Radar 3D all clear. Nothing to track tonight. 24 in the upstate, as I mentioned. Look after your neighbors, your pets. Just one of those brutally cold nights. 19 in the mountains. So make sure the kids have just about all their exposed skin covered up when they're heading out tomorrow morning. And then 51 degrees by the afternoon on Wednesday, so at least temps will be a little closer to normal for this time of year. Back into the mid 50s, Thursday and Friday, feeling good. You never know snow is on the way, but it will uh, start to push our direction into Saturday. In the mountains, right around 50 on Wednesday, 40s for Thursday and Friday, but just not quite as cold as it was today. So let's talk about the setup for this potential snow in the upstate. It looks like a done deal in the mountains, just about, unless something really big changes with the forecast. But what we're going to be doing, we're going to be watching what this area of low pressure does. This is the GFS American model, and you can see it's that it has the load basically tracking from the Midlands to the coast. And with that track, it would put the upstate close to that rain snow line where that transition happens between the rain and the snow. And as that happens, we could end up with a mix. We could get some full blown snow at times. And this track is going to be altering a bit as we get further runs of these computer models. So we'll be looking at the American model and it does look like it'll keep some snow around until late on Sunday. Then the European model also coming out. We're continuing to watch this one evolve. It didn't have much snow yesterday, but today it's showing more. So it just goes to show you we don't have a lot of consistency right now and it could technically back off again tomorrow. But the fact that we've seen a lot of these models trend toward the snow today, that's why we have a little better confidence of it in the forecast. This is Sunday morning, and that was the same for the GFS American model. That's when we're seeing the heaviest snow move in. But notice how quickly the pink takes over as it warms up through the day. We'll likely see 
some of that snow turn to a mix of rain and snow to some freezing rain and some sleet stuff that we really don't want to see. The fluffy white snow is fun for the kids, but sleet not so much. And we'll see a little bit of regular rain take over as it pulls out. But right now, it's a difficult forecast to bring any kind of totals in just yet, but growing confidence that we'll see some form of winter weather around the 85 corridor and then farther north, snow looks likely. So here's a breakdown of your next seven days. Just a slight chance of a few snow showers near the Tennessee line on Thursday night. Other than that, it remains pretty quiet leading up to the weekend. This is a look at the mountains as we're going to have a good chance for that snow. And some of the totals that have been put out by these computer models pretty high uh, for parts to the mountains. So we're really going to be watching for interest there. And also, of course, in the upstate at this point, there's just so much fluidity with the forecast that we'll be uh, fine tuning uh, with type of precipitation we see and how much as we get a little closer. Of course, you'll want to check in on the morning news. Meteorologist Nicole Pape will get you all set up with what you need to know with this weekend system.